Hey everyone, in today's lesson I'm going to talk about making a rattle out of pinch pot. Now this is going to be very similar to our orb we just made, except on a much smaller scale. Now our, our rattles can really be any size, from like an egg shape all the way up to, let's say, an avocado size shape. Um, <clears throat> all you're going to need to be successful with this is obviously your hands, some wet clay, and we're going to make some rattles out of, out of clay as well. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the table here and we'll get started. Okay, so just like our orbs, we're going to need to make some tiny little pinch bonds. These are just going to be a much smaller scale. I'm going to use a little bit of clay, let's just say something close to like a golf ball size for each half. I like to put it in the palm of my hand. The palm has a nice little curve to it. I like to keep it that way. And then just feel the clay squash between your, your thumb on the inside and fingers on the outside. And just slightly rotate. Just feel the clay compress. Sometimes you gotta squash it in a little bit. Our goal here is just to make two halves with the same width from here to here. Clay is a very forgiving material, so sometimes you can just just check the width later. That's close enough. And make it a little bit thinner. I also like to tap down the top. You can kind of see how it's undulating. And just like our orbs, we're going to be gluing these together. Okay, you can see that kind of has a little bit better fit. Now I need to let these dry a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and put these halves outside. Or just let them sit for a while, keeping both sides round. And voila, I have two sides that are basically ready to go. They've been sitting for a while, they're no longer really floppy and wet. This is considered leather hard. We have our scoring rib, it's really nice to to use this to maximize our connection area. Let me go ahead and score vigorously. Go ahead and let those sit. Now we need to make some rattles. We gotta put the rattles in now. So the easiest way to do that is just take a little chunk of wet clay, roll out a coil, remember long even pressure from the tips of your fingers to the heel of your hand. It's going to keep it nice and round. It's not that imperative, but we do want to make something round. And then we're going to let the beads, the, the little uh, beads on the inside set up. So we don't want to put them in when they're too wet, they can all stick together and the whole the rattle will never make noise. I'm going to cut some variable size chunks of clay. Let's just call it roughly the size of a pea. For something the size of an egg or a little bit bigger, we're going to probably want 10 to 15 rattles in there. And you can just take your hands and just sort of just roll them till they're round. I think you guys get the picture here. And go ahead and put the, these aside and let these dry. Now I have my two halves ready to go. And I had some dry beans. You can see how these are pretty dry. They even sound pretty dry. I'm just gonna drop them in there. Now what do I need to get this together? 
Everyone say it together. Slip and score. Some people say scratch and attach. Super important. So we're going to put some of our slip. Fill up my score marks. I'm going to press this together. I'm not only going to press, but I like to, again, I like to wiggle it just a little bit back and forth. There's a lot of shaping we can do once it's connected. You can see I'm taking my thumbs and sort of pressing the edges together. It's also a good idea to poke a hole somewhere. And then I'm going to let it homogenize. Remember, homogenize is like a ceramic buzzword. Okay, so I'm just going to let that water migrate and homogenize from one from the wet area to the drier area. So I'm going to let it set aside. Anytime you have something round, it's good to have sort of what we call like a, a firing stand. Just so it'll keep its shape. This one I put together a little while ago. I've already roughed up the edges. It's fully homogenized, ready to go. It's full of beads. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this whole thing off. Now, just like the orbs, I want you guys to embellish the surface somehow. I'm using these videos as you know, a reason to show you multiple embellishing techniques with the orbs that showed you how to, to add clay to the surface. In this case, I'm going to show you how to take some clay away and do what we call some low relief carving. I'm going to turn this beautiful little egg shape into something more, almost like a melon-like shape or form or surface. Okay, so what I'm going to do is Go ahead and poke a hole in the bottom. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to push in and it's going to give me a nice little dent. I'm going to actually force this in a little bit more. You can see my pencil is also a drumstick. Now I'm going to take a tool. You probably all have a tool like this. This is called a wooden rib. It has a nice sharp edge to it. I'm going to take this tool and roll it all the way up to the point. I'm pushing pretty hard. You can see how it's making a nice dent. This is going to be a guide for me to carve. I'm going to keep going. Try to keep this edge going all the way. Now I'm just going to cut it in half, in quarters. Pushing harder than you might think, the clay has to be somewhat soft enough to, to, to deviate the shape and form. You see how it's changing the, the way it looks? I'm going to do it again. Sometimes looking to the natural world is your really is really the best way to go. I mean, in this case, it's already taking on some sort of little fruit fruit shape, pumpkin, melon, kiwi. It's got a little of everything. I'm gonna go over these lines one more time. So now what we really have is just 
some lines on the surface, still have our original form. What I want to do is take a trimming tool and actually round those edges just a little bit more. You probably all have a tool that looks like this. It's just a standard trimming tool. We can use, make marks on the side well, with the, the sharp edge here, or I can use a rounded edge and make notches. But in this case, I'm going to use it as a, a tool for, for carving. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. Trimming tools, I mean, almost any kind of trimming tool you need. I just have a, these are some of the ones I have laying around, you know, different kinds of shapes, bigger surfaces. Smaller ones, curved ones. Seems like I often end up using this little tiny one, which is nice. But they all do the same thing. I'll try to go ahead and use this one that everybody has. Now what I want to do is take the side of this, the corner of this tool and follow one of my lines down and just pull. Just pull hard enough just to get a little bit of clay to come off and then go to the opposite side. And I work my way all the way to the apex. Just taking my, it's really just taking those two dimensional lines and making it more three dimensional. Just make sure you keep that edge of that tool in your original mark. It can be easy to slip sometimes. So just feel like you're just applying just enough pressure to get some clay to come off. Now you can see the difference between this side. It's just sort of flat with some lines on there. There's no real contour. And on this side, it's already looking a lot more alive. We can texture this as much as you want. Let me do a couple more. This tool seems to be working great for this. Something really satisfying about carving the surface of the clay. I'm just try different methods. Some people pull the tool. So you can see if this small like this, I was actually ro holding the tool steady and rotating my hand. You know, always go with your finger or a damn sponge. You can put some of your black slip on these. I like to push this down a little bit more when you think about like an, an apple or something, all that incredible surface tension. 